Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're talking about tattoo ink bands. This one's pretty complicated, so definitely buckle in. Maybe grab a snack, it might be a long one. So let's get into it. You may have heard recently certain tattoo inks have been banned in Europe, and this has caused a lot of people to take a step back and think about what really is in tattoo ink. For me personally, getting tattooed over the years, I've never given it a second thought until I heard about these articles and did some more research. So I think moving forward, this is definitely gonna be something that we all pay a little bit more attention to. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little concerning. First things first, let's talk about what is tattoo ink. So tattoo ink is a combination of a dry pigment and a liquid carrier. So that pigment can be either organic or inorganic. If you look it up, the difference between organic and inorganic pigments are that organic pigments are carbon-based. That doesn't mean a lot to me personally. So some examples of organic pigment sources are graphite, copper, ash, and tree bark. And inorganic pigments are usually made from minerals and metals. So this is pretty vague, but the point is that pigments can be made from a ton of different things. But the issue is that we don't know exactly what each ink manufacturer is using and there's a risk that some compounds might be harmful to our bodies. What makes this so hard is that a single bottle of tattoo ink could contain over 200 compounds or additives in the bottle itself. It's also not as simple to say organic pigments are good and inorganic pigments are bad because some organic pigments do react with the body negatively over time, it seems. And it's just really hard to pin down regulations on these manufacturing of ink when there's so many layers of complexity. Before we get into that, let's talk about the liquid part of the ink. So the carrier. The carrier is exactly what the name suggests. It carries the ink from point A to point B. It also helps keep the ink mixed evenly and free from germs. So the carrier can be a variety of things, but it's usually ethyl alcohol or distilled water. When I was doing research on this, I initially thought the carrier was like the easy part and we can kind of just forget about it, but that's not the case due to the additives and the preservatives that are often in the carrier. And it's also been shown from tests in Europe that there have been some harmful chemicals in the carrier. So for example, Swiss regulators tested 299 tattoo inks in the market in 2014, and they found that 7% of them contained formaldehyde. Yeah formaldehyde. I don't know much about formaldehyde, but I know it's not good. Fun fact though, back in the day, tattoo artists used to make their own ink, and actually some people still do it today, but they would just use vodka as the carrier. And apparently it works pretty well. I learned that from listening to this episode of Books Closed. If you're into tattooing at all, I would definitely recommend this podcast. And also, if you want to learn more about this whole ink issue, Andrew has two episodes where he talks about the chemistry and the ink bands and everything. It's so technical, really interesting, so I would definitely recommend that if you're interested. So let's talk about the European tattoo ink ban and what that might mean moving forward. So in Europe, they are no stranger to tattoo ink regulations, and the government has overseen this for actually quite a few years now. So countries in Europe are required to label their tattoo ink bottles with the ingredients in them so that certain chemicals that are thought to cause cancer, damage DNA, or cause allergic reactions are not present in that ink bottle. So earlier this year, the European Union called for a ban on pigments blue 15 and green 7. These are two really commonly used pigments. And it's not only the blues and the greens that are affected. Some tattoo artists have said those pigments are used in so many other colors as well. So it's a huge range of colors that are going to be affected. And many tattoo artists are really upset by this potential ban. It's not enacted yet, but it is set to enact, I think, in the next year or two. This happened because the German Federal Institute for Risk Assessment conducted a study on the two pigments, where it shown that there was a, quote, comparatively low level of toxicity. So if you have color tattoos, the likelihood that you have one of these pigments in your tattoos is actually pretty high because these are two really commonly used pigments. But you shouldn't be too worried as of yet. There's still relatively little research that has been done. And a lot of people have disputed the need for this ban considering 
the level of toxicity actually might be pretty low. So what's really concerning about this ban, at least for me, is that it's shown how little we know about what's in ink and how little has been tested on these inks and what they're doing in our bodies. And what's strange is that while there is some testing being done in Europe, there's a lot of conflicting testing going on as well in the different countries. So in Germany, one ink may be banned and in the UK, it's totally fine. So there's this website you can go on that shows you the exact inks that have been banned by the European Union. And if I just type in tattoo, you can see that there's 303 results for specific inks that have been banned so far. And if you do click on some of these inks, they do go into detail on exactly what the problem is and the country that has identified that problem. So for example, this fusion ink has been shown to contain an excessive amount of cadmium. So pretty concerning stuff, definitely something to be aware of, but something to be more aware of is that the US has pretty much zero governing body that is looking into this stuff, which is pretty crazy considering 40% of Americans aged 18 to 34 have tattoos and there's still very little oversight on these ink ingredients. The only time the FDA steps in is if there is a need to investigate a certain ink due to a complaint. And they will investigate and recall inks, and they have done that in the past, but they will only step in if there's a reason to. They're not just testing inks for the sake of it. The FDA has tried a little bit to educate the public on the potential risks of getting tattooed. In 2009, they made this lovely infographic. I don't know about you guys, but this image is really making me think. It's making me think about how this man's arm can be simultaneously so hairy and also completely hairless at the same time. So in this article, there is a section on tattoo ink research. And I think it's interesting because it highlights the problem that we're having. So they're quoting chemist Paul Howard, and he says, quote, there have been no systematic studies on the safety of tattoo inks. So we are trying to ask and answer some fundamental questions. So for me, this quote highlights the most problematic point of this whole thing. We're pretty much starting from ground zero when there's been so much tattooing happening over the past 20, 40 years in America. And it's kind of like backtracking that they are now thinking, oh, we might need to ban this. But 40% of Americans in that age range probably have these pigments in their bodies. So the main concern is how the body handles the ink over time. And if any of these chemicals are putting you at risk in some way, because the ink doesn't entirely stay within the layers of your skin, it can enter the bloodstream when you're getting tattooed and over time, your immune system tries to break down some of the ink particles, causing them to gather in your lymph nodes, which is really interesting and I've heard that before, but there's not a lot of conclusive evidence saying what exactly the effects of ink being in your lymph nodes are. But there is a lot of research saying, yes, for tattooed people, ink is collecting in the lymph nodes and this is something we should be aware of i told you guys this one was going to be a lot while the ink ban in europe is definitely concerning i do think that there is some good that's going to come out of this and it's that the united states will hopefully take a larger role in overseeing the chemicals that are in inks as well as the effects on the body over time with that being said there have been some attempts to test and regulate inks in the United States. While it's few and far between, there are some people who are doing this. For example, the Swirek group. And this is a scientific research group at Binghamton University in New York. And they have committed themselves to understanding the composition of tattoo inks so that artists and customers alike may be empowered and knowledgeable about the inks and any potential risks that may arise. So it's pretty cool what they're doing. They have this website, it's called whatsinmyink.com and they have a pretty extensive list of inks that they've tested and they've provided the ingredients online. On their website, they say that it's important to note that the vast majority of tattoos seem to be generally safe. 
However, we don't really understand the potential risk of tattoos. And I think that's a good point and definitely something that we should all keep in mind that we are walking around with these potentially harmful pigments in our bodies, but it's not something that you should be super alarmed about. And I don't mean to alarm you. I just think we should all be more aware. So here's some of the inks that they have listed on their website. So I'll just click on this first one and you can see that they're really doing a lot of work to figure out what's exactly in this ink. And this is a super valuable resource for anyone who's tattooing and might wanna see exactly what's in the ink. They're clearly still in the process of working on this, so there's not a huge amount of inks, but there is quite a bit. So it's really good that they are working on this. Now there's research on what's in the inks, but there's also a little tiny bit of research on if people with tattoos are having allergic reactions to the potential chemicals. And I mean a tiny bit. So in my research, there was this one study that was referenced a lot and they aimed to see if there's a correlation between certain tattoo colors and allergic reactions. But looking into the study, it was a study of 300 tattooed people who were randomly selected at Central Park in New York one day. And 10% of them reported to have some sort of reaction to a tattoo. And 6% reported that they, quote, suffered from a chronic reaction involving a specific color lasting for over four months. So out of that 6% of people who reported an allergic reaction, so that's like 18 people, of those 18 people who were randomly in Central Park one day, 44% of them reported a reaction to red inks, and 25% of that 18 reported a reaction to black inks. I guess it shows like a little bit of correlation between allergic reactions and tattoos. Maybe there's a thing with red and black. So this clearly isn't rocket science. They just talked to some people in the park one day. But to their defense, if you think about it, if you think about how many people in the United States have tattoos and to survey them on a potential allergic reaction that may or may not be related to the tattoo would be really difficult. So they're trying their best. So overall, this is some pretty concerning stuff and you don't need to be really scared if you have green or blue tattoos, but I think it's definitely just something we should all be more aware of. And many tattoo artists who have opposed the European ban have advocated for more regulation within the tattoo community. So the artists would be more in charge of what inks they're using instead of the government dictating that for the public. Overall, I think this is a good thing for the industry and it pushes us all to know more. And I think when we do know more, then we will have a better grasp on what inks we should and shouldn't be using. But I definitely wanna hear from you guys what you think about this whole issue. If you think it's totally blown out of proportion or if it's something really serious, let me know down in the comments below. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I know this was a long one, kind of complicated, but if you have, I really appreciate it. Leave me this emoji in the comments down below so I know you're a real one. Bye guys. I am still working on getting a few more of your guys' tattoos to react to in a future video. So if you want me to react to one of your tattoos, can be good, bad, whatever you want, tweet me at Sally underscore EST or DM me at, or DM me on Instagram at Sally underscore EST.